Welcome to day 22, Coffee Chat with me on our Manifesting Challenge. I am super excited to be here. Did you know that 50% of men and women don't look at themselves in the mirror? It's because they don't like the person that they see. Whether it's our trauma, whether it's our fears, whether it's insecurities or feeling like an imposter, or whether it's some past experience, it's literally all built up and put a lid on, on who you are. And so we end up going through life with this energy or this pattern that represses who we are, and we stop being who we truly are. You know, the whole reason I created the manifesting challenge was because I needed a reset. And I knew looking around and, you know, the last couple of years have been a real challenge for many, many, many of us. And so we needed a reset in my mind. And so I put this together and I really, I have to say, you know, I was challenged because I mentioned this before. I didn't like to be speaking. I didn't want to put myself out there in this way. This was feeling uncomfortable for me. I didn't really know what to put together and how or what you wanted or how you needed it to, to, to make the shift. Because the bottom line is I know that there's something deep within all of us that we want to create, that perhaps something's happened in our life or the whole past two years that's really knocked us off our rails, knocked us off our keister. And so that's that was my intention. But what had to happen was I had to push myself to take the action. I had to make the commitment to myself. I'm going to do this no matter what. And one of the techniques or the tools that I incorporate in the work I do is I count to five, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm exploding roses all around me. So it helps me to interrupt the pattern of my default and I don't have to know what the pattern is. I don't have to sit and analyze, uh, you know, oh, is this my a pattern from my mother? Or was this something that happened to me in grade school? You know, I don't have to overanalyze it. In fact, that's why I love the work I do, because I'm not overanalyzing it. And I think that what happens is we get derailed. We're thinking about, oh, the economy, or we're thinking about things that might have happened in the past, or a fear of the storm coming. And so we better not book a trip, or we better not. So, so we're looking at big things in our life versus taking these small steps that we can take to get us closer to where we'd like to be on our path. And quite honestly, I believe that if you have a yearning for something, or here's something else. If you're jealous of somebody or you're thinking, geez, well, look at them. You know, why can't I do that? That's a sign that that's something calling you that you have within yourself to express. And, and, you know, we, we talk about in our manifesting challenge that there's an abundant universe. If you've heard of the law of attraction or any done any personal development and realize that we are an abundant universe and you can have what you're jealous of somebody else doing. That's like your inner heart or your, your inner spirit calling to you that that's, that's a clue. That's a sign, you know, that, and of course the jealousy is a, a destructive energy. It doesn't really help us create anything. And it creates what I call a vibration of competition. And it ends up being where we put ourselves down and we put the other person down too. But I believe we're here to celebrate our wins, right? When we celebrate each other's wins, we're encouraging the universe. We're saying, yes, I want that and good for you. You might not want it, but we can still celebrate it, right? So, hey, <laughs> I need a breath. Hey, welcome, Nicola. Thank you for joining me this morning. How are you doing? I, I will. <laughs> Good. I, uh, I slept in this morning, so I think I needed that. But I had yeah. great dreams. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, I had some pretty intense dreams too. So, um, yeah, so speaking of resetting, I guess that you're having a good night's sleep is a great place to start, right? Having a reset. Mm -hmm. And we don't, again, we're focusing on the big stuff, but these small things, how are you sleeping? Um, I actually think I'm sleeping a lot better 
It's a lot of little changes. I was just thinking about that this morning. Just a lot of little changes since I've been doing this. And I realized that there are steps to take toward that one incredible thing, to make room for that and to uh, change my thinking and um, just uh, continue to work on these beautiful meditations. And I've also noticed there's less purple on me. <laughs> there's less what? Less purple. When I do the purple ball. Oh, fantastic. Our exercise. Yeah. Like last night, it was a lot less than I've been seeing all along. Right. That's fantastic. Yeah. See, so the, the meditation. So like I said, I kind of go back asswards sometimes, right? So people that trust me, and know me, you guys dove in and you're doing the practices, but that that's like, I guess that's the meat and potatoes. We've got to do the work, but there's also, like you said, these baby steps that we got, like, we've got to push ourselves to do the meditation. Sometimes we got to push ourselves to do something that feels awkward or uncomfortable me showing up here right that was that was off my normal pattern I had to shift the pattern right I had to get up earlier go for my walk earlier I had to you know get if I you know felt comfortable on on camera I had I felt like I had to do hair and makeup right I wanted to put myself in the best light I could so that that helped me feel confident right so whatever we've got to do extra that turns everything around right so it but all of those little things well what what benefits do I get by doing those little things right I have more energy I get more done I'm much more focused and I'm much more clear how I can help you, right? When we're on task, when we're staying in the rails. And are you noticing you're getting more little things done? Um, yeah, it, more little things done. Um, yeah, I actually have a different attitude. Okay, it. great. I'd love to hear it. Um, instead of it being a chore, it's not a chore. And I'm not quite there to make it fun. <laughs> well, I yeah, see. That. <laughs> okay, so yeah, and we're always at various stages, right? And it, it this might not be fun to do the meditation, but it's fun. It maybe is more fun for you to go for your walk, right? That's more fun for you. Right. So I've been looking for different things to make, to have more fun in my life that's not meditation that's not cleaning my house that's right. not right i've been looking at that and i found um a, a, an event that i can go to i have no idea what it is it's, um at the senior center good morning and, carly <laughs> <laughs> good morning is it the senior center and it's called pickleball i have no idea what that is but yes. i think i'm gonna try it out and see if i like it meet some new people you know my age so yeah, no, I've heard a lot about that too. You, you're giving me an idea because that might be something for me to get involved with. And, you know, when you move to a new area, you don't know anybody. So it might be a great way to look for a league or a group or beginners or take a class, right? I mean, why not? I can't see you because Carly's taking up the whole screen. Are you in, you're in competition. <laughs> And, and and she's jealous of the the screen time you're getting. <laughs> she's budding. No, in. Carly, Carly, honey, can you take a side step? Can you just sit over to the edge? Oh, look at that! What? I guess I got to her. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> yeah, you were giving her the message. Yeah. Well, congratulations! I think that's super exciting. Yeah, and and then um, I remember. You know, you asked us, I think it was last night about going back to where we're feeling good about something or having joy. Uh huh. And so I, it took me a minute to really think about that. And um, because so much has changed, and I have to kind of dig around for that. So um, I found um, that in my, uh, first few years of my marriage, we were sh we were showing and training dogs, and having worked in a, it was the Humane Society and everything, I remember the feeling of going from 
this, these tragedies and these problems with animals to seeing the beauty and the majesty of these animals. It was night and day difference for me. So I, I was looking for a dog show to go to. That's fantastic. I love that. So but the, what type uh, of dogs did you raise? They're called Puli. They're oh. Hungarian sheep dogs. Okay, I don't know them. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, we had um, four main uh, uh, animals, and I have pictures of them still around my house, and I still say, hello, Mookie, hello, Gigi, uh, you know. That sort of thing. That's fantastic. Fantastic. No, I, so I, I forget the, how much joy I had when I was um, working with the dogs, and then the people who loved the dogs, and then people upon people and, and, and banquets and um, learning about uh, veterinary medicine and all of that stuff. Right. So learning about it, it's like you were trying something different. You were, you know, learning, which can be fun, right? It doesn't have to be arduous and like learning calculus or something, right? And well, it was different. It, it took us away from our jobs and cleaning the house and you know the mundane you know right and then um but because that matters in your heart yes it's, it's something that you're connected with and it helps bring that vibration your own vibration up right and we just we loved our dogs and we had every saturday it was bath time and you know <laughs> it was a quite a routine cool. and grooming every day sitting watching the tv grooming the dogs <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. I love that. I'm glad to hear that you're getting connected with that. And, you know, that might spur something else in another direction for you. Who right? knows? I, what I'm doing instead of uh, what I was doing for the last year until I started with you is I was getting more and more isolated. And a lot of that had to do with the pandemic. So becoming more isolated and, and, and everything, I did not realize how depressed I had become. And lonely, yeah. you know, and when we don't have each other to share our gifts or our, or share joys with and, and support each other, you know, it's really minimizes our frequency. And I think, you know, I've been subjected to that myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the under, one of the underlying reasons is I want to see people. I want to connect really. And I know a lot of people are still holding themselves back. They don't want to come on camera. Oh, they, they don't like their hair. Or they don't like how they're looking or it's too early. I'm hearing all kinds of excuses with almost seven, uh, 700, a hundred people sign up for this manifesting challenge. Now I know the coffee chat is a, a strange time, but um, you know, even for our live recording, our live sessions, all out of all those people, you know, a handful are showing up. Mm -hmm. It's my hope they're listening to it after because there's a whole lot of gold in those practices. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and there again, you know, listening and doing the small things that you're being guided to. Finally, right? It took all this time to move some of those energies out of your space so that you could give yourself permission. And you went, this doesn't have to be hard. Mm -hmm. where, where can I let go? Oh, yeah. And actually, because you, were, you mentioned a while back about trees don't lose all their leaves at once in the, in the deciduous in the fall. And I went, oh, okay. And so when I'm, I'm doing the uh, grounding through the cord and, you know, pushing the button to allow things to release, I, I picture leaves. <laughs> so, Fantastic. Yeah, there's Fantastic. a better times, you know. Yeah. Going within. Um, exactly. Um, yeah. There's so many visual. <laughs> so it, it's amazing when you start doing the work and we get more, when we go more in depth in that's what we do in the mastery training is we go in depth, but your spirit guides you. It's almost like you make up your own tools yeah. because that works for you. Then your mantra or your life purpose mission for each chakra we develop is yours for what you need that inspires and motivates and triggers reaction within your body. And there is no absolute formula for that, which is so exciting, right? You're getting the rhythm. You're getting into the flow now. You're starting to feel it. 
Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a. Uh, I thought about it this morning when I was getting ready. Um, um, it's progress, and it's not perfection. In other words, that I set the goal. This is what I want. This is you know I'm going to it. And sometimes I feel, well, it's not here yet. And I remember saying on these calls that we we start to focus on it's not here yet. <laughs> And that can set up a block. Yeah. So I have to constantly counsel myself, you know, on on uh, the celebrating the little things, you know, like right. Hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this um, because of the little gems that you've been talking about about finding joy, finding something to be happy about, finding. Uh, what was the last time you were fulfilled? Now, the first time that I heard that in the first, I don't know, maybe a month ago, the first time I heard that, I thought, I don't remember anything in my life that I felt truly fulfilled at. And then I remember a little talk you gave about um, our perceptions about little things. And I started thinking about the time when I was happy, but there was an undercurrent of dissatisfaction of of there could be more or there this this is uh it's even as a child i would run out of the house and i would climb a tree and be happy in the tree but i ran out of the house for a reason you see it was is that undercurrent it sort of escaped that you know so um it, it's it's those kinds of things that were always a little bit of an undercurrent for all the times that I felt fulfilled and joyed, <laughs> everything. But what's happening now is I started to realize that and then be okay with it and letting that go. Right. And like I was reflecting when I was a kid, I used to collect uh, rocks. Mm -hmm. And when you put them in water, they look really pretty, right? Right. So I started going door to door to sell my pretty rocks. The, the bad thing is I never thought out of this is they dried as I was taking them, right? I took them out of the water and then I couldn't sell them. <laughs> but but that made me happy looking at those pretty rocks. Yeah, I was so happy with my pretty rocks. Mm -hmm. Another thing as a kid that I remember doing with my friends is we'd go, we call it snail hunting. So we we had this creek or this, uh, we had a ditch with water in it snails would grow there so we'd collect up these snails i mean such a simple thing as a kid that you do it's not it doesn't have any meaning but boy i was so happy doing that being outside being with my friends connecting with nature felt like i was on a mission you know of something but just that moment again insignificant but we're connecting with that frequency that we've long forgotten buried our trauma are, you know, all the things that we've accomplished and things where we failed, you know, and um, setbacks um, and stories we tell ourselves, stories that other people tell us that we can't do these things, right? All of that gets buried. So yeah, I, I remember being criticized a lot as a child for wanting to be a doctor or a nurse or something. And they would say, uh, well, you can be a secretary. <laughs> right. So, right. Oh, yeah, wow. But anyway, um, I'm just, I'm okay. I, I, I'm starting to see all the joy and all the reasons for the contrast, for the things that didn't seem so happy. Right. And I don't need to feel there's something wrong because there isn't. Well, and then, yeah, it, you know, it's interesting because I uh, somehow on my phone, Louise, uh, some uh, video came up and Louise Hayes was talking about in order to heal, the most powerful technique was to forgive. Mm -hmm. And so I was reflecting on that because of there's been so many people talking about that. And so I was thinking about my own mother. There were things that I'm, you know, that happened about eight, 10 years ago that I don't know that I've forgiven. So I started looking at it and just, you know, reflecting in my own circumstance. Have I forgiven my mother? And I believe I have for that circumstance. 
Right. And then I kept thinking and I went, wait a minute. And it, it somehow it was like a flash through my timeline where I saw myself as a young kid. And what was interesting is I remember asking my mom for support or asking her for help on something. And she dismissed me and said, you don't need help. The others need my attention and help. Mm -hmm. So from a very small age, I made the, the decision. I don't need help. I don't need support. I got to figure it out on my own. So I was thinking, wow, I, I need to release that. Or as Louise Hayes would say, forgive that. But it was something so deep and so far away that I didn't think of that as such a big deal to need to forgive. It wasn't like a massive, you know, rejection, or I guess you could say it was abandonment or betrayal. It wasn't intentional, like I left you on the side of the curb, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm not coming back for you, kind of an abandonment or gave you up for adoption. But there was there was that trigger that I interpreted in a way that doesn't allow me to have support or that I have to really readjust those energies, release that pattern so that I can receive. And so, yes, I'm always open to support from the universe, but it's in interesting where I sort of unconsciously drew the line, like people, you know, or a woman, an older woman couldn't, for example, but we all do these kinds of things and um, we've long forgotten or are un completely unconscious of where that began. So again, I don't use the word forgiveness because that would, in, it, you know, intonate that she did something wrong yeah. she didn't do something wrong yeah. mm -hmm. and so she's not wrong for what she did and I'm not I mean you could say oh I was damaged no I made choices and 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 maybe made things harder for myself as a result so that was my journey of discovering you know how I can create more now I can realize I can have that if that's what I want and, and see how I want to apply that in my life. But that's, that's where the forgiveness part, I realize, yes, there's an energetic pattern that keeps coming around for me to bust. <laughs> and I can bust it with one, two, three, four, five and explode roses. Right. Right. right? right. Every time I feel or think that, then or catch nature. myself, then I can bust the pattern and then take the step trust and reach out what i love about that is it's simple and and no thinking no yeah. analyzing no analyzing but, uh and um i think it was you but i've heard it before about um going to therapy or you are to these groups um where you tell the story over and over and again <laughs> Oh and my it just, God! It just makes it more anchored into our. Yeah, being. Well, I, I I went to Alcoholics Anonymous, not Alcoholics yeah. Anonymous. <laughs> I went to Adult Children of Alcoholics, yeah. and a, a number of these groups, and I went, I'm out of here. Yeah. This is I, I'm tired of hearing all the story, and that was before I started doing this energy work, but I realized, man, I I come home and I feel like crap. Yeah. You know, I, I, I have compassion for people, but I just don't want to keep feeling like that. And I didn't know at the time, I didn't have tools how to not take that on. Yeah. Yes, I wanted to change, but I'm like, give me a solution. I don't want to keep talking about it, right? I want to fix the pain. Right, exactly. That's, that's why I left it as well. Yeah, and therapy, the same thing. Thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it or talking and talking and talking isn't taking action right that will keep you in the same spot and you know it's the thing that i know that rubs people the wrong way but if you protest uh anything let's say let's pick abortion whatever you protest whether you're for or against you anchor that thing that you're against right so um a long time ago i i was I had a, a real good friend. She we lost contact, but she was saying, "Take your hands and go like this, and that's against." And then what is it the for? You know, it, there's there's resistance here when you're against something. And then she said, "If you're for something, it's just 
easy. So only yeah. four. In other words, what do you want to accomplish? Right. So instead of anti-abortion or anti uh, restrictions, wherever the restriction might be, is being able to choose. And quite honestly, I don't care what anybody in any government decides. I know that if I'm ready for something, I'll be able to find a solution. Yeah. Some way, all, somehow. We all will. And it's just, it's just so amazing yeah. to me about um, how I can, um, ever since that time when my friend showed me about gas support, um, anytime something very weird or, or something that I find horrifying, I would uh, step back and say, oh, what's the lesson here? Or I'm okay. Or go you know, with what Sandra Walters calls divine neutrality, where it's not that you don't care, but no. you're not going to get engaged in um, dialogues uh, that can result in people feeling even worse or even yourself. Right. So, well, and another way is we could do one, two, three, four, five and explode roses because that helps us get into that neutral place and maybe gain a new perspective on something where we're very definitive on when we've got blinders on. We None of us know we're wearing blinders in some area of our life. What is and interesting so, about that, that, that you told me about a car wreck or something and that you send a, a, a gold rose so I've been sending gold roses. Yeah, I've been sending I've been sending giant gold roses to Florida. Yes. And, and and have you noticed with the hurricane, like there's fewer less destruction than they were anticipating. Yeah. yeah so, so, so we can do some about this. <laughs> well, and you know, I had an interesting conversation with a woman who she was in Florida and she said something to me. She said, um, Well, I don't, I don't know what, where we were going. We were talking about the, the uh, hurricane. I said, you know, my uncle, I never met the man, but I had an uncle and aunt that was married to a man, a U.S. Uh, Air Force guy. Actually, I think he was Navy and he was a hurricane hunter. <laughs> and they would be in planes and they would draw, fly into the eye of the storm. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And so she, she said to me, her name was Jess. Oh my God, that would be just too scary. I just can't even imagine that. And I said, well, Jess, if you think about it for a minute, that's the place where it's absolute stillness. Yeah. Where there is no turmoil, where, you know, a chaos. And that, you know, is God. When we can come into that center point mm -hmm. and that zero point, that stillness, all that buzz around us, regardless of what we're going through can't be affecting us we're in the stillness and so i said i'm going to send that stillness in the gold rose to you and everybody in in florida so that's all i did and i was just you know smiling to myself it's always great to have that to see what's happening yeah, and it's interesting how i'm getting that more more uh, neutral perspective on what's going on uh -huh. i'm not going oh my god that's awful now there's some things that I, it still triggers me but i do my my best um um well we're human better we're, at. We're, we're here to have emotion it's not like we're wiping out the emotion but yeah. true mastery our true magnetic and manifesting power comes with getting neutral there's no way around this and to have a high vibration being in joy so when we're in joy and we can be neutral, doesn't matter which way, one way or the other, then that is where we draw it to us. Yeah, and I I, I did see a, a clip on Facebook about a man saving a cat that had was trapped from the raging waters going around the the house, and he carried her gently, and as the as he was carrying her, she looked at the camera. And it, it was just this look like, oh, thank you. It was so right. Beautiful. She clung to him. It was adorable. How beautiful. How beautiful. Yeah. But yeah, you know, and we can oftentimes when I would go to a scary movie, I would sit in the movie and explode fireworks. 
And if I'm looking at a TV thing with the hurricane and the devastation or people that are stranded or whatever, I could be sitting there exploding uh, fireworks. And what's that doing? That's dissipating my own fears, my fear of being stranded or abandoned or drowning or, or, or the people not getting help or, or being without food or electricity, whatever my fears are will amplify and that's what I'm sending them. If I can explode and dissipate those patterns, right. Right, right. I can actually send that clarity and the solution and the divine intervention for them to receive. So wonderful. It's so powerful. It's so incredibly powerful. And all of us watching whatever we're watching, we're sending out vibrations as much as we're being programmed with those. So we have a choice. And what action are we going to take? So that's sort of a, uh, a non-action. It's in our mind. That's the action we're taking. But it's a conscious decision. Yeah. Mm. And it's so much more fun. When you, start <laughs> see, when you start seeing these little miracles. You know, and how it might have been. I have no proof that my my gold rose with the eye of God or the stillness of God and the peace and, and serenity of God reached them or, or affected it. But I feel good. I know that I perhaps with my thinking made a difference with what I'm intending for them. It's a big shift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, for all of us, you know, doing our work and that want peace on earth. Well, guess what? Starts here. You know, what do they say? Finger pointing at you. It starts with you. Well, there's three pointing back. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I am biased to these tools that I've been using because they're fun. And the yeah. more and more you start playing with them, just with a thought and a flick of a switch, they can change the dynamics. God, that's so much fun. That yeah. is really fun. Yes. Fun. That's part of my fun. <laughs> there, another thing that's part of your fun. So I would recommend for you to just sit down for five or 10 minutes and write down all the things that you used to think were fun. And maybe there's some more of those things that you can explore. Maybe yeah, there's something that climb a tree. <laughs> no, well, that might be stretching it right now. <laughs> Maybe a stretch class, <laughs> you know, but the, but, you know, finger painting as kids, right? We used to do messy things. Well, I actually used to paint. Yeah, I could see painting on you. Yeah. There's a, you know, I was just looking at those. I have three paintings, two of them that I did. And then one of them that you saw me break out mm -hmm. of the package. And I realized that the two paintings that I did before that I did, are representative in that. Final yes, point. they are. I mean, I'm just like, wow. And I, one's a tree you branch. Find, you finally have the eyes to see. Yes. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> right. right in front of my face. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, the stars and the trees and the water are big parts of me. And it's interesting that last night, all I was dreaming about was the Chattahoochee River constantly one dream after another after another or it was a very long dream interesting so <laughs> that's beautiful beautiful you know you're 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 triggering something within me a while ago i was going through some files and i found my old report cards oh. and um you know, I was a great student. I was a hard worker and I was really, you know, well-disciplined, et cetera. But there was always this repeating comment that I would be so much, such a better student if I didn't talk so much. And, you know, all of this conversations were making me think how afraid I was to get here and to be on, you know, video and talking and just being out there and talking. And then look, it was the thing that I was accused of. They kept telling me to shut up. 
Well, and now <laughs> that's probably what I'm supposed to be doing, which is a yeah. crack up. It, it's like, oh, I'm supposed to be talking. Oh, it was a natural gift that I had to connect with people and share and, you know, emote and all that. And so look how we're repressed. You know, it was written right there in the report card for me to still see. I can't see what I did in mathematics or arithmetic or English or, you know, spelling. But I can sure see those comments. <laughs> okay. yeah. And probably got me in trouble with my mom and dad, kept telling me to be quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And no wonder I was afraid of talking. It was going to get me in trouble. <laughs> oh, and my son was growing up. He was quite the talker. And he <laughs> he'd be talking to me in these circular ways and just drove me crazy. I said, I said, Jonathan, I really love you. I want to hear what you have to say, but I can't seem to focus right now. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I would say I would probably do, can you go draw me a picture of that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and he was into into these video games, so she had to just describe every little movement. It just overload right yeah and, I and, and, and it's too much that's the thing a lot of people do that and you know we get caught up in the story yeah it's not about the story when it comes to manifesting what we want to do is clear the story so we can get yes. what we want bottom line <laughs> that's what i want so i it would be interesting now what did he want what was he really wanting was he wanting that connection yeah was he wanting to express, you know, his enthusiasm for what he's discovered, you know? No, all of that. I knew that. <laughs> yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was seven, but he, he got yeah. more. He got so excited, right? He just <laughs> didn't know how. To... Yeah. Yeah. Well, we all do that at different ways, at different times. Yeah. But, but now I crave crave conversation with him I just crave it and this is not happening <laughs> oh really well yeah. what you could do is that tool that I taught you um just send all your all his energy back to him and reclaim your energy from his space because as as a mother you've got a lot still you know all your energy from when he was a kid you know those cherished times so reclaim your energy this will open up your relationship with him and and strengthen your communication no matter who it is in your life but mothers and and, and their children is especially important and your partners even even if you're not in a relationship now all the old ones the exes all the exes in texas <laughs> the frenemies you know call your en energy back from those people okay and give them their call your energy back and give them their energy back that will help immensely yeah yeah you'll be amazed sometimes they reach out and talk to you just really quick and i know when i'm working with people we do that they're like oh amira you're not going to believe this they just texted me <laughs> <laughs> it's just like what i can't believe how fast this works yeah oh okay. yeah it does yeah and so is your relationship strained no it's just he's busy uh he's just so busy with his new wife and uh, his job and his friends and his his life yeah <laughs> You're not number one. Yeah. And so just, you just do that. And again, the, the exercise is about getting as neutral as possible. Yeah. Nobody, he's, he's still into video. Games. He's 40. <laughs> yeah. It's, just I like, would say what? it's an addiction, <laughs> a fascination, an addiction, whatever. Yeah. So he's got times for the games, but he doesn't have time for mom. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Well, we all set our priorities, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I know I'm at the stage you are of putting ourselves first. And I think that's exceptionally hard for uh, women, more so, I think, than men. And learning, it, it's a new skill that we have to apply. And when I talked earlier about, you know, taking the action, you know, 
committing to giving to yourself, committing to putting yourself first, com- reevaluating where you don't put yourself first is, is really key in being able to manifest what you want. If you can't put yourself first, then you're saying, I don't matter. And then ultimately what I want doesn't matter. So that's a complete invalidation of who you are. Yeah. So that's where the deeper work has to come, right? For us to be reminded that heart and soul, you do matter. You do matter. We do matter. I matter. You matter. So what was your biggest aha of the training and the work that you've done to date, because I know that you can, you know, technically the challenge will continue till the end of September. We might want to have a call where we can get as many people on and talk about what they're noticing and, and uh, address any concerns you have again at the, after that. We could do that. Because I'm just making it up. So what, <laughs> what, what would you say is the biggest shift to date? Or the biggest aha? or awareness? Uh, I think it's, I I have to say that um, I have shifted from almost apathy to I can do this. I mean, it's a total like, instead of closing down, I'm opening up and I'm growing again and I'm happy again and I'm sleeping well and I have more energy so I I can't pinpoint it exactly when it happened but it definitely happened (laughs) definitely true and growing congratulations yeah you're doing amazing thank you yeah and that's that's the fire that's the the growing momentum that we start to feel you know and and there is a lasting extensive development that will be percolating it's you're still in pro you're on the back burner and simmer right now but it's coming to a boil you know and (laughs) and, and, and with more clarity and more enthusiasm more ideas and the manifesting gets stronger because we're building a a vortex we're building an energy field that is lasting and i gotta tell you yesterday um one of the um, accountants somehow started talking to me and I told him about this idea that I had for a product and he got excited he said we need to talk <laughs> <laughs> I love it I love it I love it I love it <laughs> so I you know that's just that's the kernel you know let's see if that grows <laughs> Well, it's a magic bean. Let's see. The well, starts. that might be a sign for you to maybe start putting together a proposal or for you to start thinking if they don't want it, I'm going to go market it to someone else because well, actually, that's the clue. I was thinking of marketing it for myself, but I was coming up against the, the all the barriers, you know, to get something off the ground. So I just said, okay, God, just show me what I need to do. And almost every day I go back to that dream that I had, I mean, it was like years ago about the building in Atlanta that was called Divine Activation. <laughs> so I, said, I think that was the building that was the Divine Activation building. Wow. Like every day. <laughs> okay, I love it. You just step in. I think we did something in meditation where we stepped through a corridor or a doorway. I can't even remember my own meditations. Yes, I remember that. Right, we went into that activation. And went into the to the labyrinth and we walked yeah. the, you know we yeah, were it was a gazebo it was a gazebo we the gazebo. stepped into the gazebo yeah so uh i look for it every day fantastic fantastic yeah i think even the stargate uh meditation a while back that we did yeah one of the first ones um so that's fantastic and you know here's the thing with a mindset, well, if this man doesn't take it, but go in there being proud and strong and realizing there's got to be something in it for you. You know, are you going to get a percentage of the royalties if that company takes it or whatever? No, I would have, I would be the the person. They would take royalties or they would take 
uh, part of the pie. But, oh, I see. I see. So I'm, I'm the one. You know, I am, I'm keeping that to myself. And you, you get your customer to fund it, perhaps. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know all the details of what your business would be, but yeah, that's great. I think it's, I think it's a good one, and it's, uh, it's, it's an alternative to some things that are out there. Then no one has it. No one. And I'm saying, wow, I see the need, and that's like the first part of getting in at the Find down. a need and fill it, right? That's yes. marketing 101. Yes. <laughs> and so, then it's location, location, location. Right. And yeah. so I'm just um, putting it out there and, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, planting the seeds of it right now and um, getting, getting some of the things in that I need to work with for the product. I can make the product. I've made it before, so. That's, we'll see. We'll see how, uh, well, how exciting. Up. You should see how you're glowing when you're talking about that. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. It look, you know, you look, you look like, yes, yes. You're feeling it at a core level. Like this is, this is hot. This is hot. And it seems to be backed by my angels. So yeah. <laughs> Talk about a divine seed. Yes. And you've worked for it, Nicola. You've been doing some great work. You know, all of you're showing up for you. You're saying I matter. Yes. With, with your practice, with the with the work you're doing, and people are complimenting you. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And what a good feeling it is, huh? Yeah. So when I witnessed you from when I first met you about six months ago, mm -hmm. you were depressed. I was. You were lethargic. You were, you had a hard time putting words together to make a sentence. Yes. You were in pain. You couldn't even sit upright in the chair. You were kind of propped up and. Yeah. Um, what else was going on for you then? Well, I. I just, I just didn't know my direction exactly. Well, I was, certain people were coming at me and um, wanting my help with this and that. And it's just, it just, you know, sorting through that. Plus one of the major people that I was working with just left me, you know, just totally you know, vanished. Right, right. So you were abandoned, you were confused. You were, I, I would say that's trauma. You know, and then not taking care when you when we we can't focus on ourselves, and we don't feel good about it. We stop eating properly. We stop taking our supplements. We stop doing the things that we need to for ourselves. Right? That's called depression. Yeah, that's what I did, and then I got the, the shingles, and then I got the cold. Right. It was just one thing after shingles. another. It was just one thing. Yeah, you're right. You yeah. Know? Like, like whoa. <laughs> right. And and it's because yeah, you were. You were rejected. You were abandoned. You were confused and probably still traumatized from the whole COVID thing too. So yeah, so all of that is what we call, uh, you know, it just gets amplified and it's screaming loud until we disrupt those patterns and start clearing. And you've really applied yourself, you know, every step of the way and look at the results. And it's also interesting about Back then, I was taking the supplements and taking care of myself to be there for them. Interesting. So you've reframed it. Yes. I've had to just now I have to do it for me. The eating right, the exercising and, and everything else, which I stopped doing. You know, I, stopped, I stopped doing it because it was for them. I was, I was slender a year ago. Now I'm like, I always wait. No. So I said, all right, I've got to do this for me. And that's why I got the new dishwasher, you know, and I, and I said, I can start cooking for myself. And when I start doing that, I'm, I'm loving me. That's fantastic. Yes. And it's one step at a time, one yeah. stake, taking action and having the courage and having the confidence one step at a time. It doesn't all come at once. But I have to say it again, you know, I'm working with some clients who, you know, I'm encouraging them to do the, the quantum tools and they might listen to one meditation a week. 
unfortunately, when we're really stuck, we need to do it a little bit more, right? Yeah. I can clear your energy. I can reset you. But if you're not, you know, going to take the shower every day, I can tell you you're going to need a shower. If you don't shower, you're going to get stinky, right? <laughs> and and we got to keep up the maintenance of that. If we if our if we stop, the energy will coagulate, you know, or just you know get stuck again. The whole idea is to keep the energy flowing, you know, mm -hmm. keep the momentum. If we stop watering a plant or a tree, what happens to it? It withers. It dies. Dies up. Right. And so if we don't, as we learn that we're an energetic being first, but nobody taught us these basic principles, these basic, you know, simple routines, if we incorporate those, everything can look completely different. And it's really pretty simple. And it does take us to think a little bit different, taking a decision to take a different step, you know, mm -hmm. forcing myself to get out there in the mornings when I didn't really want to, because I committed to me, right? Because I committed to you guys. And so sometimes we have to commit to someone else to make it more of like a reason, right? Because I was finding myself putting, oh, no, nobody's going to come. So I'll just stay in bed or I don't have to go for a walk today, right? I would I was catching myself doing that. Go oh, get up, get going. It doesn't matter who shows up. Yes, it matters I show up. And ha you have to move the energy. It's an interesting yes. it comes up plugs up. <laughs> That's right. And so all of it together, right? So yes, I'm teaching those basic tools or guidance on the manifesting challenge where it's like plug in, just do this. Okay. And that's the first step. And then as we start thinking different and, and making act, making decisions to commit to it, right? That's a small step, but that small step amplifies, right? And you are proving it to yourself, right? that it's working and you're you said to me so many times and this stuff works it's amazing <laughs> yeah i know i know it works yeah at the end of the day it's pretty darn simple yeah it is but it's a little, sometimes a little tricky because my mind goes one way and i whoa well, wait a minute <laughs> not that way well and nobody's we've not been taught We've not had a technique or tools to train our mind and keep bringing it back, right? Our spirit, our mind. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's why we have to repeat it. That's why we have to be diligent with it and can't slack off on that. You know, you can't slack off when you're driving your car because you'll get in a wreck. <laughs> that's right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, bringing our awareness to something new or a new aspect to ourselves just takes a little practice, mm -hmm. right? And the skill is developed through the practice and having the courage. You don't believe in yourself right now. You were hanging on to the belief that I said so, right? You had somebody anchor you, give you the, you know, something to hold on to until you could get it yourself. Yeah. And that's nature human nature and so that's why i did it i knew we all needed something to hang on to or to say let me just do this and let me do this so that's why i created this space and i invited everybody in the in the manifesting challenge you know to reach out to me um if they're they're feeling stuck or they want to get unstuck i'd rather reframe that to reset because some of you aren't stuck some of you are building momentum like you but you're ready for another reset or you're ready for the next step. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So yes. And I will be uh, talking with you. Did you check your mailbox? Not yet. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll wait. Actually, you. It was on earlier, but I realized it was almost time for you. So. Oh, I okay. Yeah. Go check it and you know, I'll be here. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, I guess I want to just leave with, you know, sometimes we have to push ourselves to mm -hmm. make, take that step to do the uncomfortable thing because of an old pattern, an old routine right. and push ourselves out the door 
with our shoes on, right? For that walk <laughs> early morning, push myself to get on here and to warm myself up to, to conversations, right? Being on the spontaneous live or on a, on a video. And so that's been my challenge. And so I appreciate you for showing up and, and being with me while I'm challenging myself <laughs> as you're challenging yourself to be Absolutely. bold and you're, you're being brave and courageous by sharing your story, which I'd so applaud. And uh, I know that's inspiring other people that might be listening to this replay. So, so thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for showing up. Sure. That matters. Matter. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, love. We'll talk to you real soon. Okay. Bye now. Have a great day and a magical month. All right.